Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Um, thank you for joining us, Hayden. How are you? We've been waiting for this day for quite a while, and of course, we're back to our Friday webinars, and we're very happy that you could join us. If you can hear me, may I please request that you type yes in the chat box? So, all right, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so, almost towards the end of the year, and what an interesting year it's been um, for us personally, as well as for all of us as teachers, and certainly for Trinity as well. So we've relaunched an entirely new digital syllabus, um, which has, of course, the face-to-face -face component. But um, today we're going to actually be taking you under the hood, um, wherein we look at the grades a little closely. We look at some of the uh, myths, facts, and so on. Um, and most importantly, we understand the power of speech and drama. Speaking of power, there's no better person to do this and to take you through this than my colleague Chanda uh, Katuria. Chanda, please come say hi, and um, the, the session is then all yours. Brilliant. Thank you, Dale. Hello, uh, everyone. <laughs> okay, so we are all back to the uh, favorite stomping ground. Uh, mm -hmm. I have several more of my colleagues joining us. They'll come in um, um, per dramatic uh, entry um, on Chanda's direction um, to keep the language flowing within the spirit of speech and drama. Um, so on that note, Chanda, um, very interesting afternoon. Um, what is gonna be one of the biggest surprises you think everyone's gonna get after this afternoon? Uh, well, I think... Uh... Uh, I think you also have to wait and watch. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be a spoiler. <laughs> All right. Okay. So on that note, I'm going to um, hand over to Chanda. Um, and of course, I'm just literally behind the screen. So um, for any help, uh, Chanda, it's all yours. Thank you. So welcome, everyone. We are extremely excited about this uh, relaunch of uh, the digital syllabus of speech and drama and we are really raring to go. So uh, drama and uh, the performance arts somehow have always been treated as a thing of luxury, uh, especially in this past year when I think schools and, uh, and teachers and students, everyone has been trying very hard to keep the main subjects afloat. Drama and performing arts don't really stand a chance. But things are slowly and surely changing. You people signing up in such huge numbers, I think, is a big proof to that. So uh, let me quickly show you what we are going to be doing today. Uh, so we're going to be covering some myths and facts uh, that float around uh, speech and drama and drama on the whole. Uh, we are going to be talking about the construct of the entire speech and drama syllabus. Uh, we are going to be covering the learning outcomes, the assessment criteria, and the attainment descriptors, which form a very important part of our syllabus. We're going to be looking at the skills that drama teaches you, uh, per se, and also, in particular, the speech and drama syllabus. And finally, which it would be incomplete without, we're going to be looking at all the tasks from grade initial to grade three. Looks like a lot of serious stuff, right? Uh, but uh, I promise you we are gonna have some fun while we do, the, do this. And for any uh, drama practitioner, drama is fun. And drama games are right on the top of that list. So we are going to play today a game called Thought Tracking. Now, I'd love to play this game with all of you present, but it is technically impossible. So I have with me my colleagues and very dear friends who are going to help me out here. So I'm going to invite them. And they are actually not very new to you if you've been attending our webinars. Uh, the first one on my list is uh, Reshma. Reshma, can you please unveil yourself? Let us see you. Hi, Reshma. Okay, we've got Ritika, Ritika Ratna. Hi, Ritika. And we've got uh, Nisha Lobo joining us from Mumbai. 
Okay, right. Can you please unmute yourself? Okay, ladies. Thank you for being such a sport. <laughs> okay, so we are playing this game. Uh, it's more of a, a tool, a process drama tool, um, which is called thought tracking or thought tapping as well. And I'll just tell you the rules. First of all, be creative, like that says there, think out of the box, okay? The second rule is don't tell us what you're doing, but show us what you're doing. And last but not the least, your teammates are waiting for you, so you have to hurry up. Now, this is how the, the, the game goes. I'm going to play a piece of very catchy music, and uh, I expect you to do what you normally do when music plays, dance right? I know there is a lot of restriction here. You cannot get up and dance much as you'd like to. Uh, I'd like you to use your body parts, all the body parts that you possibly can while sitting down, okay? And enjoy. <laughs> so are we ready for this first half of the game? Oh, yeah. Yes? So there goes. <laughs> Oops. And wonderful. I'm so sorry. Yes, correct. You were supposed to freeze. I'm going to play this once again. And when I say three, two, one, and I stop the music, you're going to freeze. Now, when you freeze, I want you to freeze in whatever position that you are in, right? So if your arms are up here, please see that you freeze here. Don't make any changes. It's very important. Okay. And try to show us your arms, your head, and let's see what we can do with it. Okay, are we ready? There we go. Yes. Oops. Great. Wasn't that very simple? Please relax. Please relax, ladies. Okay, good. Now, like all other drama games, there is more to it that meets the eye. Okay, so we're going to take it a step further. I'm going to play the music again. And this time around, when you freeze, I want you to observe your bodies. I want you to see what you're doing with your body. What does your expression look like? What are your hands doing? And come up with a dialogue, right? Or rather a monologue. Something that tells us who you are and what you're doing. <laughs> Right? Remember the first rule, the second rule, don't tell us what you're doing, but show us. Okay? You, you don't have to tell us. I mean, I am is completely taboo. You cannot say I am singing, I am dancing, I'm climbing a tree. But you have to say something that is related to that so that the audience here can guess what you're doing and what character you're playing. Is that clear? Yes? Give me a thumbs up if it is. Yes. It's like they're doing it uh, in school these days. Yes. Yes, Ritika. Sanda, yes. Um, there are some messages coming in that uh, people attending, the attendees cannot see anybody except you. Oh, is it? That's what some of the messages are saying here. Okay. Dale, can you please look into this? I'm just doing that. Go ahead, don't worry. I'm just doing that. Okay. All right. So shall I start the music and let the party begin? Okay. Okay, and so we'll freeze. Start. Three, two, one, freeze. Okay, we'll go with Reshma first. Reshma, quickly. I'm really, really excited today because I'm going to meet my friends at Coco Tree the first time after lockdown. So I'm really okay. happy. Great. All right. That's lovely. Ritika. So I am, I'm going to be teaching. I have so many of my students in front of me and I'm teaching the dance that I used to do when I was growing up. It's called the bus stop. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. All right. Nisha. Nisha, you're on mute. 
the festival of Sankranti is upon us. I mean, it's of course a month away, so I'm trying to fly the kite. Okay, that was lovely, ladies. Thank you. But uh, we'll have to make a small change here. I'm sorry, this has prolonged a little. Maybe my fault. I couldn't explain. You're not supposed to tell me what you're doing. doing. Just give okay. me a dialogue. Like, for example, uh, probably what Ritika said that she is, what did you say, Ritika, that you're playing? Um, I'm teaching, I'm teaching my students a particular dance. Okay, so you, what you need to do is say the line that, okay, children, let's yeah. dance, right? So instead of telling us what you're doing, give us a dialogue. Yes, do you get that? Shall we try this one more time? I know I'm taking a little more time, but let's quickly do this. Here we go. And three, two, one, three. Yes, Reshma. Jumping with excitement because I'm going to Cocoa Tree today. Okay. Have my best coffee and best friend. All right, great. Yes, Ritika. Come on, this is how you're supposed to punch. Yes, come on. Lovely. Come on. No, left. That's good. Right. That's good. Awesome. Yes, Nisha. Okay, you know what? This is where you are. You need to come here. Right? <laughs> this is where I need you to be at. Okay, that's brilliant. That's great, ladies. Thank you so much. So you got the game. All right, I want to ask you, as students, suppose you were students and we were playing this game with you, what was your takeaway? What did you gain from this game? Uh, Reshma, would you like to go first? <clears throat> I think it really helped me to be creative and mm -hmm. it was a good coordination between my body and mind. I was thinking while I was uh, uh, dancing and enjoying. Right, very good. Yes, Ritika. Um, I actually felt that I kind of surprised myself as to how much and what we can come up with just by simply thinking about what we really do and putting an element of maybe drama into it. Okay, that's nice. Nisha, would you like to add? Yeah, of course. Um... So I really, the first time when you said, you know, I am is banned, you can't use that. Mm -hmm. I heard you, but I still went ahead and used the I am. Okay. And um, the second time when my hands were frozen in this position, I, I couldn't think of anything else other than that, you know, how we sometimes tell kids, you know, this is not what I'm expecting or this height. So it was something that was spontaneous and creative. Exactly. You got the words, Nisha. Spontaneous. <laughs> Creative. I think this was a huge takeaway, apart from which for me, uh, as a teacher, I've seen that uh, with children, especially since they're waiting, you see that third factor there, which says your teammates are waiting, so hurry up. So they realize that this is, you need to be empathetic, you need to think about your teammates, because in theater, you have to think about your co-actors. So I think for me, that is one of the greatest uh, takeaways. Thank you so much, girls, and please stay there. I'll need you soon. Okay, and I'll call you in really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's a simple game like thought tracking teaches, teaches us to focus, it teaches us to relax, and any teacher can use it in her classroom. It need not be a drama class at all. For example, if a teacher is taking a, a history lesson, and uh, she is teaching the uh, independence movement, uh, she can probably create a scene and get all the children to perform as various characters and then track their thought to see what all of them are thinking. Okay, so it can be used in various subjects. Let's move on. Uh, like I said, I need to address some myths that have been floating around and also to confirm some facts. So let's see myth number one. It is only for children. When I say it here, I mean drama and the speaking drama exams. Is it only for children? Well, I'd like to tell you it is not. Anyone at any age who is interested can take these exams. Um, to confirm this fact, I have with me uh, another colleague, Sanat, who has taken an ATCL very recently. So can we have Sanat on please? Sanat, are you with us? Hi Sanat. You need to unmute Sanat. 
Hi, Chandra. Hi. So Good nice day. to see you, Sanat. Thank you, Samia. Thank you for making it. <laughs> Sanat, so we are telling our viewers here that there is no age limit or in your case, there is no gender barrier as well to take the exams. Can you just throw some light upon uh, how you went about taking it? I mean, what made you take it? Uh, see, I was always a believer in uh, acquiring acquisition of skills. Okay. And uh, Trinity led me very strongly into that because there is a whole lot of 21st century skills. Right. Uh, which I believe all of us use it. And I thought, why not get assist uh, in the same? And that's what led to it. Wonderful. And, and why now, Sanat? I mean, why not earlier? See, the process of assessment was more practical for me as mm -hmm. I was in my bread and butter role. <laughs> uh, but probably when I decided to come into the domain of academics, somewhere there was a need to uh, reaffirm my belief that whatever I am do doing or whatever skills I am acquiring, I have a certain level of proficiency. Okay. And that is what led to the assessments. Okay. And was there, was there a point, Sanat, where you and your own children at home were taking an exam at the same time? Oh, yes. <laughs> My and me, both, both of us uh, had exams almost simultaneous to each other. Okay. And, and how does uh, that, uh, how do the children, uh, you know, react to that? Excellent. I mean, as father and daughter, we always felt that we are competing with each other. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sanath. It was great, great talking to you. You're a huge inspiration. Thank you. Right. So I hope we were able to address that myth. Okay. Uh, the second myth, it is only for those who want to pursue acting as a career. Now, um, a lot of parents come up to me and say that my child wants to take uh, medical or wants to take engineering. Uh, how is a speech and drama exam going to help him or her in his career as an actor or, or I mean, a, a doctor or a, a, an engineer? Uh, for this, I'd like to quote uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who said that to be a complete human being, you need to learn the art of science and the science of art. I think I couldn't have said it better. This is a beautiful uh, quote, which I use all the time. And it also does address this question. Moving on, the third one. It's difficult to teach if you are not a drama professional. It is not difficult at all. I mean, if I, I really believe that all of us have an actor in us. And if you are a trained teacher teaching drama, it's just taking it a step further. All you have to have is, I think, passion to teach and, of course, for drama. The fourth myth, it is an extracurricular activity. Um, well, it's not. Drama can be incorporated in all the subjects. Hence, it is not an extracurricular activity. So no matter which subject you're teaching, please incorporate some drama into it. I'm sure your students will look forward to your classes more than they are already, I'm sure. And uh, finally, last but not the least, shy and introvert students should not take drama. I beg to differ. I feel some of our greatest actors are actually introvert people. Uh, I feel they become better actors because they have more access, I think, to their inner world or better access to their inner world than extroverts. So, and in fact, introverts should be encouraged to take the speech and drama exams, right? When you see the fact section, we've pretty much covered the whole thing in the myth section, right? Uh, a couple of them that like, I'd like to talk about here is that um, experiencing and drama exam helps the teacher understand it better. Uh, yes, it does. It is something like, uh, driving a car. So you may know how to drive a car, but only when you sit behind the steering wheel and actually drive yourself, do you understand how it is done. Therefore, we encourage all our teachers to experience the exam. Uh, there is no prerequisite for any grade, absolutely not. So if you feel that you're ready for a grade five or a, a grade six or for a diploma for that matter, 
please by all means go ahead and take it uh, as long as you are confident. Uh, the last one, choose your own material. Again, going back to the, the driving example, one would think I love uh, driving and I love cars, but uh, once again, we are showing you the destination. It is up to you what route you take and which car you choose to drive. So you can choose the material, any material that you are comfortable with, right? So I hope I've addressed both these factors and let's move on. Um, before we actually get into the speech and drama syllabus, what is speech and drama all about? Quite literally, as the name suggests, speech and drama is a combination of speaking uh, wherein your voice modulation, all the other elements uh, of speech are assessed and the drama part of it assesses your body language, your expression, your movement, how you get into character. So it is a beautiful combination of speech as well as dramatics. Now, if you look at the construct of our syllabus, it comprises of the learning outcomes, the assessment criteria, the task construct without which actually any examination would be incomplete. The attainment descriptors. And finally, we pride ourselves at Trinity that all our, like Sanat was also saying, all our exams are very real life. They teach you the 21st century skills. Okay. And these skills are transferable right through life. Okay. But we're going to look at all this in detail right now. Okay, talking about the objectives, it is actually a threefold thing. They are designed to focus on developing skills in a variety of forms, including poetry, prose, play extracts in a range of styles and from different periods. Now we encourage our students to take a variety of uh, literary material from various uh, cultures. Uh, like for example, I have a lot of teachers and students come up asking that, uh, can we take something that is rooted in Indian culture, a poem or a story or a play? And how would an examiner who is non-Indian understand um, what is happening in Indian culture? Here I'd like to cite an example of my own ATCL uh, in speech and drama, where I chose to do a piece from R.K. Narayanan's Swami and Friends. It's an extremely uh, Indian thing and uh, South Indian for that matter. And the examiner to my pleasant surprise not only understood uh, the material, he could actually relate to it. And he had also studied and read a lot of other uh, R.K. Narayan stuff. And we got actually talking about that after the exam. So please go ahead and take any kind of material from any culture. When I say any culture, it could be uh, something out of India as well, uh, as long as it is in English, of course. The second objective, of course, is that they have to choose their own literary and dramatic form, something that they are comfortable with and something that complements their studies. So by all means, a child can take something from his or her syllabus. His or her syllabus, I'm sorry. The third objective is that like we are going to keep saying, and we will never get tired of saying that it enables them to develop their 21st century skills. Right. Next, let's talk about the three factors, learning outcomes, assessment criteria, and the attainment descriptors. We will be talking uh, in depth about all these. Learning outcomes, what are they? These are uh, these described, describe the learning that a candidate will expect to undertake while preparing for the exam and during the exam itself, including the skills and the ability. Assessment criteria describes the standard that needs to be met and attainment descriptors tell us, unfortunately, because it is an exam and an exam cannot be an exam if you don't have the attainment descriptors. As you see here, the roadmap shows us that the learning outcome of grade initial and one are pretty much 
similar and grade two and three are on the same line. So it is a very progressive thing as a child goes from grade initial to grade three and so on and so forth, the learning outcomes will become more complex uh, and more is expected from the child or from the candidate. Right, assessment criteria. In the speech and drama subject, we uh, assess to begin with the technical skills, which means is the child able to use his or her voice? Is he able to use the body? Uh, is he using uh, the space correctly? Uh, and so on and so forth. Engagement with the material is basically, has the child understood what he is presenting or is he doing it only because the teacher or the parent has asked him to do so? Okay, so engagement with the material is extremely important. Thirdly, is he or she able to communicate with the audience, which is very, very important. Now, remember, these are not uh, exams where a child has to uh, just do a, a narration or a recite a poem and, uh, and walk away. That is not what this exam is all about. It is important that they should be able to make that connect with the audience. And that is what they are assessed for. And finally, of course, because it's all about performance, they will be definitely assessed on their performance, right? So these are the assessment criteria. Okay, this colorful slide here tells us exactly how it is mapped and it shows us the progression from grade to grade. If you just um, look at the, the first column, the initial grade. In initial grade, the child is expected to only perform audibly. Nothing much is expected from the child at this stage. Audibly, clearly, and where required. Underline where required accurately. So accuracy is not tested in this grade. A child can say a few things in his or her own words, right? When they move to grade one, that same task, same criteria becomes perform audibly, clearly, and accurately. Slowly, the accuracy is becoming mandatory, right? Grade two will be the same, and grade three also will be the same. Grade four, five, six, seven, when you attend that, you'll realize that uh, there is more responsibility on the child as far as accuracy is concerned. The second one says demonstrate some ability to use body and space as appropriate for the material. This is grade initial, very basic. When they go to grade one, they should be able to communicate the meaning of the narrative where appropriate character. So the narrative is going to be very important and wherever it is appropriate, they should be able to relate to the character as well. Third, again, grade two would be the same and grade three also would be the same. Initial, demonstrate understanding of the material, which remains the same throughout till they come to grade two, where they are expected to understand the meaning and what makes a good story. Now, what kind of questions are going to be asked? We'll talk about that a little later when we're looking at the tasks. And finally, in grade three, uh, they would also have to talk about where they used things like pause and emphasis. Okay, so they, they, have, they, will be, they will be talking about the voice elements a little more in detail. Under grade one, they demonstrate variations in pace, pitch, and volume to communicate meaning. Grade two would be the same and grade three would also be the same. As you can see, grade two, they now start engaging with unseen material. So they will be given a, a picture uh, based on which uh, they have to invent a story or they would be given words, but of course that comes later. Right now it is about inventing a story from a, a picture. And also they will be given an unseen passage and they have to bring to life that text. So I hope this was clear. And if not, I've got another slide here, 
which describes it even further. And I think there is more clarity in this one uh, where you can see that initial grade one, grade two remains more or less the same. Grade two, uh, grade three, you have some uh, added criteria, right? Okay, so let's move on. The attainment, there you have my, uh, <laughs> the speedometer again. Um, we have these attainment descriptors. So if the child uh, has not been able to uh, perform audibly or was a little hesitant, uh, is not heard at all and was not able to make any communication with the audience, then the child or the candidate would get a below pass. If a child has been able to make some kind of connection with the audience, has been heard, but maybe uh, spoke a little fast, um, there was a little uh, lag in clarity, the child would then be given a, a pass and merit comes after that. And of course, finally, distinction is where a child should be able to make full uh, contact or connect with the audience. Uh, will be able to communicate and answer all the questions uh, confidently. Okay, so that is when a child would or a candidate would get a distinction. Uh, please check the syllabus for the grade wise detailed attainment descriptor. So you'll find it in our, in our digital syllabus. And uh, it is really very interesting to see how, uh, you know, these little uh, changes are made and uh, the child gets his marks. Moving on, the skills. Like I said, we take great pride that in the fact that uh, our subjects uh, are extremely rooted in the 21st century skills, which are the life skills. Uh, drama uh, as a sub, as I think drama itself uh, teaches a lot of life skills. And uh, speech and drama exam only supports that, right? So some of the skills that we learn through drama are communication and interpersonal skills. Our ability to explain what we mean in a concise way, to listen and to be able to relate to people and to to uh, react to key instructions. And how does the speech and drama syllabus help us there? It, uh, the, the performance of the material that we have, are we able to convey the meaning? Okay, so that is how the exam supports it. Same goes with creativity, working under pressure. When uh, you're doing a play or you have uh, chosen to do an exam, you have to juggle a lot of things with that, maybe your schoolwork and uh, things at home uh, and so many other things, but you have still chosen to do that exam and you're working under pressure and uh, you know that you have to deliver and you have only this much time to learn and to prepare and to be able to deliver. So drama does teach you all these life skills. Organizational skills again, very important. Uh, you need to be organized uh, in the, especially the exam, because you need to know exactly what comes after what and how you're going to present each one of these. So organizational skills again, and also the, the material that you're choosing, we encourage them to choose things of different genres. So if you're choosing a, a tragedy, a, a poem that is a little uh, tragic uh, in genre, Maybe they'd have to choose a play that is uh, a comedy, okay? And uh, a prose that could be completely different. So it, they get this kind of an organizational skill by uh, performing all three genres or all four genres at the same time, one after the other. Uh, critical thinking skills. And of course, final, last, but not the least, I think uh, it makes a person very confident, right? Apart from this, these are only the principal uh, skills or the specific life skills. The other skills, life skills that come along with drama, creative problem solving, respect for people, cooperation, teamwork, motivation, leadership skills, uh, following rules, healthy self-image, decision-making. I mean, the list is endless. I can go on and on and on about the number of skills one learns by 
uh, practicing drama and also appearing for speech and drama exams. Right. Um, our syllabi is blended very well and um, it is they are, these exams are globally acclaimed. We will talk about this slide, but maybe a little later when we are coming to the end of our presentation. And if there are any questions that you have, yes, we will take them as well. Okay, let's come to the exams. The exam structure of the speech and drama exam is uh, like this. The performance pieces are given maximum weightage, as you can see, they take the maximum time as well. And out of 100, maximum marks are given to the performing pieces. The supporting task and the reflection task. We will talk about what each one of this is in a bit. Okay, but this is how the division is. Uh, and total marks are out of 100. Right. So we are into the tasks right now, something that a lot of you have been waiting for. The tasks are mainly divided into, like I said, performance, reflection, and supporting. Let's look at grade initial, which is for eight minutes. It is awarded out of 100 marks. Performance in initial, the child has to tell or act and extract from a story either from memory or in the candidate's own words. Like I said earlier, memory is not tested at this stage when the child is doing a grade initial. I want you to note tells or acts. So you're not actually supposed to act it out, okay? All you have to do is you could even, the child could even just narrate the story using very few uh, physical and vocal elements. The second one is candidate performs a poem from memory. And finally, the candidate gives an impromptu response to a set questions, reflecting on the performed pieces, including their meaning. Now I've added another column on the right, telling you about the life skills that again are uh, uh, the children achieve or attain by uh, you know, these tasks. Like for example, the first one, when a child tells a story or acts out a story, it's his confidence, his communication, as well as his public speaking skills, uh, so on and so forth, yeah? So since we are running out of time, I'm not really going to stress on each one of these. Uh, let's get into the task. What do you say? Yes? Okay. So I have a small piece over here for a grade initial. And I am going to again invite one of my colleagues to take on this little piece. Now, a little disclaimer here. Uh, we, I have not shared these with my colleagues earlier. So this is a surprise for them. They haven't prepared at all. And um, so they are going to be taking it on like a grade initial child would, okay? Uh, can I invite Nisha, please? Yes, Nisha. <laughs> Hi, are you ready to be a grade initial? Oh yes, let's see how it feels. Okay. Yes, go on. So I'm supposed to read this? Yes, you're supposed to read this because you don't know it by heart. So <clears throat> just read it and see what you can do with it. Okay. Once upon a time, a caterpillar crawled inside a hare's house when the hare was away and set about making himself comfortable. When the hare returned home, he noticed new marks on the ground going into the cave. He called, who is in my house? The caterpillar boomed out in a loud voice. It is I. Yes, I, who crushes rhinos to the earth and tramples elephants in the dust. The hare hopped around crying. What a 
What can a small animal like me do with a creature who crushes rhinos and tramples elephants? That was lovely, Nisha. Okay, Nisha, one small uh, question. Of course, you know that there are more questions than one in reflection tasks, but uh, can you tell us what did you enjoy most about this performance? Oh, okay, well, uh, it, it's a very easy story to perform, but I kind of liked that I could do voices here. You know, there were three kind of different voices I tried, right. and I enjoyed that the most. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, can you can you uh, can you guess, or maybe you haven't read the rest of the story, but can you tell us what happened to the hare eventually? Did he manage to get back into his house? I would like him to get back into his <laughs> house. I definitely would, and I would hope that you know he kindly figures out from the shape that it was a tiny creature. So. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you, Nisha. Actually, we have another piece here. But uh, I think we can come back to this later if we do have time. Sure. Yes, Nisha? Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to grade one. Grade one, the child is supposed to perform any one from memory. Remember, this is slightly changing now. Either an extract from a play or a monologue from a book of monologues or a passage of prose. Second, the child or the candidate performs one of the following, either a mime or a poem. And finally, of course, you have the, the reflection where the candidate would have to talk about or reflect on the performed pieces, including the meaning of it. Now for this, I have another friend or a colleague of mine, uh, Ritika. Oh, was it? Uh, okay, I think I had to call Reshma, right? Reshma? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, Chanda. Okay, so can I show you the passage? Are you ready? Okay, so I have for you a little monologue. And read it. Okay. Yes. So grade one, so you need to use a little bit of voice. Yes. The wooden fang. Oh dear, oh dear, this really couldn't be worse. They're going to find us if we don't get a move on. And I'm worried that the tide might come in and drown you just to add to our problems. Wake up, Hiccup, wake up. You must wake up. Oh, thank the great wings in the sky. He's alive and he's waking up. Oh, Hiccup, I'm so sorry, boy, but you must get out of the sea immediately and the tide's coming in. You're on the little isle of Hero's End. Your ship sank with all the lost things on it. I'm afraid. So Alvin retrieved them and he has them now, which means we are in a bit of a hurry. Actually, but you say you don't know who you are? Are you really telling me you don't know who you are? Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, however bad things seem to be, they can always get worse. The boy has lost his memory. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much, Reshma. Thank yes, you, Chanda. A Thank question you. for you. So who do you think are the characters in this small monologue? So I think there's uh, uh, the one who saved uh, Wooden's uh, Wooden Spang has Wooden seen Spang. the yeah uh, hiccup, and uh, yes, and uh, he's been very kind to let hiccup. Uh, you know, he wants hiccup to move away fast. Okay. But he's really upset that uh, hiccup has lost his memory. Okay. And how did you show the audience uh, where you are, and what the character was feeling? So that was a little voice modulation, and uh, yes, like. Uh, a little bit of uh, hand uh, gestures and uh, yeah, I guess that, that's about it. Okay, so yeah. so you're probably on an island or something? Yes, yes, right? yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's we, because we said, talked about the ship and uh, yes. yeah, 
the things. Yes, and everything uh, sank and sank. yes, all yes. that. Thank you so much, Reshma. That was wonderful. Thanks, Thank you Jata. for your help. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have another poem here, but again, we'll come back to this later if we have time. Moving on, we talk about a grade two, which is for 12 minutes. Now here, the child or the candidate has to perform two pieces chosen from the list below, which is an extract from a play, a passage of prose, a poem, or a mime. So the candidate now has to choose any two pieces. The second which tests the key skill is either reading at sight a passage of prose or inventing a story that is based on a picture that is given to the child. Now in the digital exams, as you may all know, or the picture and the passage has been given in that particular week where the child is supposed to take the exams, right? And finally, of course, there is a set of questions that they have to answer relating to the content and the meaning and what is the child's or the candidate's idea of a good story. This is great too. And uh, I know I'm taking Dale by surprise, but Dale, do you think you can do this for us? Hi. Yeah, what about okay. Dale? Yes, could you read this for us? Okay, just give me a second. This is a, yeah, a little poem. Okay. Um, Fall of a fatty, Max Fatrim. Poor Humpty Dumpty's nephews and nieces are very disturbed that he's lying in pieces. With all the king's men, it's a shocking disgrace to leave these fragments all over the place. For surely we could, with some explanation, establish a fund for his quick restoration. Rebuild Humpty Dumpty? Our reasons because the sad sight he is to the round shape he was. Yet, when we have asked for some nice press releases, we've sternly been told that he's better in pieces. You cannot upset when it's tested by time, the terrible truth of a nursery rhyme. We can only say to the big and the little, don't sit in a wall if you're fat or you're brittle. Wonderful. Thank you, Dale. That was great. Dale, one question. Sure. Um, who are the various characters in this poem? So it appears there is uh, the King's Guardsman, mm -hmm. uh, um, Humpty Dumpty, who is, uh, was inanimate or rather uh, larger than life. Mm -hmm. um, there were his nephews and nieces. And it appears that this is a big discussion happening in a little imaginary kingdom okay. um, about um, something um, which has befallen them, um, which is of great concern, and also pulling people in certain directions. Some have the view that he should just lie like that, and some believe, certainly his family, that he should be restored. And how did you show your audience that there were these different uh, points of view? I think by... Um, using um, pauses to okay. create emphasis on different views um, that the audiences have uh, or the subjects have in this case in the okay. uh, poem okay. um, by using an intonation or change in tonality every time there is a change in thought. Right. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah, I don't think that was uh, by any means an answer grade two would give, but uh, yes, oh, thank sure. you. We'll take that. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay, uh, okay. Let's look at, oh, okay, we do have something else for you, Dale, actually, or okay. I wouldn't mind if Sanat takes it. Sanat, can you take this on for us, please? I have a, Sanat, you there? Okay, I think we've lost Sanat for some reason. Uh, Dale, do you mind taking this? So there's a picture that has been shown as a stimuli and you have to invent a story. Just a few words. So once upon a time um, in a faraway land where little children enjoyed the joys of nature, lived a little girl called Francisca. Francisca loved being outdoors, 
She loved playing, she loved dancing, she loved singing. She enjoyed everything that was full of life. Um, this little town was set in a place where it rained almost every day. With umbrella in hand, Francesca set out every day to join in the revelry, join in the nature and have fun. And one particular day, her umbrella blew off with the wind, it was so strong. So Francesca um, was determined that that would not let her spoil her mood. She promptly went back home, bargained with her mother for another umbrella and resumed her joy. Lovely, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we'll have you back again, maybe for another uh, grade sure. some other time. Thank you, Dave. All right, let's move on. Uh, here I'd like to tell you, we've also got the MIME task. Uh, and uh, MIME, as you all know, actually it's, uh, MIME has always been a big mystery uh, because most people think, when you think of MIME, you think of those, uh, you know, the striped clothes and uh, the mask and, you know, the white gloves that they wear for uh, a MIME performance. But uh, this MIME here does not have anything to do with that. Okay, so MIME is mainly uh, communicating with your audience without using words at all. So you can use your body and uh, there is a technique to that. Now, what we have here, and I think I'll request Dale to also add it in the chat box, the link to uh, some guidance on MIME and also a video that has been prepared by Trinity College London, which you could uh, should definitely go and uh, watch. Uh, we will talk in detail about MIME when we are doing the uh, you know, the, the, uh, maybe in uh, later classes when we actually have, um, you know, uh, MIME uh, as a topic to cover. So right now we're not going to spend too much time on that. I've just shown you a little picture of a boy uh, who has uh, been looking forward to have his lunch all day. Maybe mom has packed something really nice and he realizes that it has been robbed. And he is, as you can see from his expression, very angry. So it's all about expressions and your body language, okay? And how you can depict it and convey it to the audience, right? Let's move on to the next grade, which is grade three, which is for 14 minutes. For the performance part, uh, the candidate has to choose any two and perform from memory. Again, uh, a passage, uh, a, a play, I mean, a monologue from a play, a passage of prose, a poem, or a mime. In the key skill section, the candidate has to choose any one, either read at sight a passage of prose or again, invent a story based on a picture like we did in grade two. And finally, now in the reflection task, the child has to talk not only about the content and the meaning, but also pause and emphasis. Now we had our grade two child over there, Dale, talking about pause and emphasis, which um, comes into um, uh, in the uh, in the um, grade three, okay, and not in grade two. But of course, if the child uh, knows a little, by all means, he can talk about it as well. So uh, for grade three. I have another colleague of mine joining me, uh, Rithika. Rithika, are you with us? Yes. Hey, yes. Hey. Okay, I'm Rithika. Here. So can I show you the passage really quickly? Yes. Okay. Okay. And there you go. So remember your grade three, Ritika. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to read it, keeping in mind the voice elements. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. All right. A child's garden, Michael Foreman. The boy saw it after a night of rain, a speck of green in the rubble, peeping up towards the sunlight. He moved some broken bricks so that nothing 
would fall and crush the tiny plant. He didn't know what sort of plant it was, a flower or a weed. He just knew it would struggle to survive. The boy searched around and found an old can which, he, which held a little rainwater. He brought it up to the plant. Drink up, he whispered. Drink up. Okay, Ritika, I'd have to ask you to stop because I think we're running out of time. I'm going to ask sure. you just one, uh, one question that probably came into your, uh, your first paragraph. Where did you, did you use pause in that first paragraph? Uh, where did I use pause or why did, did I you, use pause? Did you use pause? Yes, of course I did. Okay, now the question yes, is where did you use it? Uh, to begin with, the easiest way to go about is to follow the punctuation okay. and pause according to the punctuation. Mm -hmm. But having said that, also because this is a grade three, by mm -hmm. this time I think a candidate or a child is also trained enough to know where the modulation of the voice needs to come in. Therefore, the pause and the emphasis according to the sentence that he or she is reading. Right. And where? why did you use uh, pause where you did? Um, I think the kind of pauses that one uses or I did was to actually give the entire piece a little more meaning to make it more interesting. Okay. The audience. Yes. So can I just rephrase that? That last line that you read, you said, drink up. He whispered, drink up. I saw that you changed the pitch of your voice, yes. right? Yes. And yes. is there a specific reason why you did that? Uh, because here I felt that there was this little boy who rescued this plant and he didn't know what to do. And he was, he didn't, I mean, he was treating the plant as if it was somebody he could narrate to, I mean, you know, talk to as a friend mm -hmm. or, you know, somebody mm -hmm. he was nurturing. So he didn't know it was a tiny plant. So he didn't want to speak very loudly. So therefore it was drink up. It's a small plant. So it's right. he whispered and right. drink up. So, you know, yeah. you're being a little careful, caring towards it. Therefore, that's the kind of modulation in your voice you that's are supposed right. to use. Perfect. So it was a little sapling that he was giving water to you. So probably he just whispered. Yeah, and he said, that's great. Thank you so much, Ritika. At such short notice, you could be with us. Thank you once Thank you. again, all of you, Thank actually. You. All right, let's move on. So here I have a passage for sight reading uh, for a grade three. Uh, by the way, all this material and a lot more is there on our website. All this is from the website. So you can go ahead and choose what you want. Uh, which again is not a compulsion. You can choose anything from your own uh, textbook. All right. And I think with this, we come to an end of our presentation today of grade initial uh, to grade three.